Getting old happens to the best of us, including rock stars. If they don't die before they get old, chances are they're eventually going to look old too. But some rock stars don't just look older as they age, they begin to look completely different. Since breaking out in the 90s, The Offspring's Dexter Holland has looked largely the same. T-shirt, jeans, and spiky blonde hair. Aside from a few extra pounds typical of getting older, he's kept his look consistent his entire career. But before The Offspring became a pop-punk household name, he actually sported a completely different look. Instead of short and spiky hair, he was crooning his tunes while sporting chest-length dreadlocks. It was certainly an interesting look, but perhaps not the best idea. Holland's hair was, quite simply, far too thin to successfully pull off the dread look. He didn't look stylish so much as he looked like he had just stepped out of the shower and hadn't yet begun to dry his hair. But once Holland cut the dreads and embraced spiky gel, his band sales never fully recovered. Whether that had to do with his new do or not is up for debate, but why risk a good thing by changing it? Either way, spiky-haired Holland graces every bottle of his personal hot sauce, Gringo Bandito, making his new signature look truly immortal, record sales or no. Michael Stipe, lead singer of alt-rock giant R.E.M., has basically been three different people throughout his career. When the band began in the early 80s, Stipe had so much hair on his head, his dark, curly locks came all the way down to his shoulders, and he rocked that look pretty well. But hair doesn't last forever, and Stipe's has gradually disappeared. By 1987, when the band broke big, his hair was far shorter and beginning to thin. It was the end of the long, luxurious locks as he knew them, and by the early 90s, he was completely bald. But no matter what graced his skull, he kept his face mostly smooth and clean-shaven, save for the occasional scruff. But no more. Today's Michael Stipe, largely retired since R.E.M.'s split in 2011, has embraced his inner Santa Claus. He's grown a humongous bushy white beard while also keeping his head shorn. That, plus a shiny new nose ring, should ensure Stipe remains as alternative and non-mainstream as he was when he was topping the charts. I get a lot of uh, like, hey, elf guy, Bill Murray, Skid Row Santa, around this time of year. While Ozzy Osbourne has always been the Prince of Darkness, he didn't always look the part. When he started out with blues metal pioneers Black Sabbath, he looked just about like any other long hair you'd find walking the streets of 1960s Birmingham, England. He dressed in pleasant earth tones, rocked feathery brown hair, wore either no makeup or just a hint of it for the stage, and had a laid-back, welcoming look in his eyes, even though he did have some knuckle tattoos. Fast forward to today, and Ozzy has completely altered his look to reflect his legendary reputation. He has way more tattoos, and they're all super cool and super metal. Just about everything he wears is now jet black. He sports a ton of eyeliner to further make himself look spooky and evil. Then, of course, there is the aging process, which in Ozzy's case actually works perfectly for his onstage character. It's a lot easier to look like a harbinger of death when you're not terribly far away from it yourself. I broke my neck in January, I had pneumonia, I had blood clots, I had everything this year. Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards is a textbook example of what can happen if you take rock and roll excess to its logical extreme. He doesn't look like an older version of himself so much as he looks like a completely different human being. This may surprise a lot of people, but Keith Richards actually used to be young. What's more, he also looked young, with smooth skin and hair that hadn't yet been affected by years of drugs and alcohol use. Decades later, that's obviously no longer the case. Richard's wrinkles are deep, his eyes are sunken and tired, and while he still has plenty of hair, it's not nearly as luxurious as it was in his 60s mop-top days. It's not just simple aging, either. Even in the early 80s, Stone's frontman Mick Jagger still looked pretty young, while Richard's was already looking significantly older than 40, the age that both of them reached in 1983. Metallica frontman James Hetfield has aged fairly gracefully, but that doesn't change how he could go back in time, stand next to his early 80s self, and 9 out of 10 people would probably insist they were unrelated. Like most 80s metalheads, Hetfield used to have super long hair, though he didn't tease it to death like its glamier counterparts. He was also thinner and clean-shaven, not electing to grow a beard until later in the decade. Today's Hetfield has hair that's far shorter, not to mention extremely white. He's definitely put on some weight, not to mention muscle, which is necessary to play guitar as long and heavily as he has. 
Plus, his facial hair makes his face look completely different from that of the crazy young kid screaming out the songs from Kill 'Em All. Perhaps even more jarring than the change in Hetfield's appearance, however, is the change in his voice. His signature gruff vocals are easily recognizable, but not so much on his early recordings. In an early demo for Hit the Lights, for example, his voice is thinner, his pitch is higher, and his aggression is nearly at zero. It doesn't fit the thrashing music behind him, and luckily for his band and music history, he altered course quickly. In the late 80s and early 90s, Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose was on top of the metal world, and he looked the part too. He had everything going for him physically. He was thin, he had piercing eyes, and he rocked his long red hair harder than just about anyone. Aside from his knack for fighting fans and onstage temper tantrums, there wasn't much about Axl Rose that didn't scream awesome. But the years have not been kind to Mr. Rose. His hair, while still fairly long, isn't nearly as red as it used to be, and his faded eyes don't pierce the soul anymore so much as gently poke at it. And like a lot of other people his age, he's gained a fair bit of weight. Still, he looks better today than he did a few years ago, when he was even bigger and sported facial hair that simply made him look messier than usual. While he's looking better now, it's safe to say that the days of Axl Rose rocking booty shorts to show off his toned athletic legs are long past. Bob Dylan is proof that facial hair can completely alter someone's appearance for the worse. His 60s look is perhaps his most iconic, probably because that's when he became a musical icon. He was clean-shaven, with dark hair teased into a puff looking every bit like the young, hip, musical beat poet he was. Several decades later, not a whole lot has changed, same for time, obviously. His hair is now a little grayer, certainly, but it's still fairly puffy. He mostly dresses the same way, and his face looks about the same as it did way back then, only with more lines. And yet, he sometimes looks like a different person, and that's for one reason, that infamous mustache. Sometime in the 90s, Dylan began rocking some wispy lip hair. It's often just two lines dripping diagonally down from his nostrils, and even that little bit of fuzz changes his look drastically. Whether the mustache looks good or not depends on the eye of the beholder, but he definitely doesn't look the same. That's probably the way he likes it, though. After all, this is the guy who keeps playing his own songs differently, so why wouldn't he play with his looks the same way? Legendary rock star Neil Young has never fit the stereotype of what most people would consider the world's most attractive man. That said, the years have certainly hit him hard and left us with almost what seems like two distinctly different people. Young Neil Young had a thin, scraggly look to him, with scraggly dark hair to match. Old Neil Young, meanwhile, is still scraggly, though with a perhaps less flattering body type. His hair is now lighter and wispier, and it's complemented with big, white, bushy sideburns that barely fit his face. He's quite a bit heavier than he used to be, and his already wrinkled face looks even older thanks to his ever-present scowl. In his case, it's fair to guess that the wrinkles probably aren't laugh lines. Young's look isn't helped much by his choice of fashion. He's always been a t-shirt and jeans kind of musician, but old flannel and wrinkled shirts, not to mention the frayed guitar straps he regularly sports, give off the look of a hobo rather than a rock star with decades of experience. It's possible he looks this way on purpose, to give off as much of an everyman vibe as possible. But that doesn't really work if hardly any man wants to look like him. Though maybe that's exactly what he's going for. What colorist did I have when I did that? <laughs> no, you, had no, you had nice brown hair, it's beautiful. Yeah. You're a stud, eh? absolutely. Even someone who's dutifully followed Grace Slick's decades-long career from the beginning would have trouble identifying her today. She's retained virtually none of her famous appearance, and she couldn't care less if anyone dislikes it. Her look at the height of her fame was striking, to say the least. Between her supermodel looks, dark black hair, and champion eyeliner game, it was near impossible to see her and not fall in love. Fast forward to 2019, and she's a completely different woman. Her hair is white as snow, the makeup is minimal, and she's put on her fair share of weight. She looks good, happy, and healthy, to be sure, but most certainly not like the white rabbit lady of yore. The reason for such a drastic change is simple. She's retired and likes it that way. Slick left music following a 1989 Jefferson Airplane reunion when she was 50. According to her, that was the perfect age to retire, because, as she once said, all rock and rollers over the age of 50 look stupid and should retire. She was just as hilariously blunt when discussing her vegan lifestyle that she doesn't always stick to strictly, as she told USA Today in 2001, If I see a big chocolate cake that is made with eggs, I'll have it. 
She may not be willing to hit the stage and rock somebody to love anymore, but Grace Slick is surely fun to be around at parties. Linda Ronstadt became famous for her indelible voice and for looking a particular way. At the height of her career, she garnered a reputation as one of the most beautiful women in music. Everything about her caught people's attention. That, combined with her ability to expertly sing just about any style of music, whether it be rock, country, jazz, opera, or even mariachi, earned her millions of dollars. She was so influential that by simply wearing roller skates, she could kick off a national craze for skating. But that was nothing compared to the craze for Ronstadt herself. Her current look, however, is miles away from all that. Much of that has to do with the naturalness of aging and her haircut is now more of a medium bob instead of her long classic flow. But without question, the biggest change with Ronstadt is her singing voice. That is to say, she doesn't really have one anymore. She's been retired since 2009, and a case of Parkinson's disease has completely robbed her of her ability to sing. As she told AARP in 2013, No one can sing with Parkinson's disease, no matter how hard you try, and in my case, I can't sing a note. No one expects youthful looks to stick around forever, but losing such a powerful voice is infinitely sadder. I'm lazy, so it's a good thing that I lounge. So I'm glad to have the leisure time. I have a huge stack of books that I need to read. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.